Josh is still out in the cold, but he will never know how much I love hearing that bell on Sunday mornings. Very cones. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Excuse me, I had something very important to say when I got up here. I got distracted by the bell, and now I don't remember. So I'll probably remember it in the middle of my sermon, and it'll just come out out of nowhere, and it'll make no sense. But uh, welcome to worship. I am Beverly Malden, pastor at Gold Hill. If you have joined us online this morning for the first time, please let us know where you are from and how we best can pray for you. We here at Gold Hill love to pray. We are just a bunch of bumbling, fumbling, broken, faulty Christians trying to make our way to that goal of perfection that Paul taught about so that we can maybe pick up a few hitchhikers on the way there are so many lost and broken people in this world, and um, I love this season where we are focusing on the anticipation of Christ. And so as John Wesley would, would tell us to do, go and be kingdom builders. And so that is what we are going to focus on these, these four weeks, the anticipation and um, what, what God wants us to do with the birth of his son that he sent our way to save us forever. Um, we did get some prayers in our prayer box this morning. I have a few requests that came over my telephone. I told uh, Carolyn I want my phone to quit buzzing this morning. But uh, the Richies had a death. They were in um, John's cousin, Scott Ritchie, had melanoma. And he, he, he passed away. And they went, they've been down in, in Ala, is, are they in Alabama? Columbia, Columbia. So um, they are grieving. And if we can uh, remember John and his family, um, I got a text from Darius that he got his booster Friday and it has kicked. I'm not going to say what he said. But he says he thinks he's feeling better, but he's still got an achy and dull headache. He had fever yesterday, but not today. So I don't expect to see him sitting on that front row or side pew over there. And um, the overcashes are, I want to keep them in prayer. They are, we, we kind of know the situation that they're going through, the struggles that they are having, and they uh, took some time this weekend to go and look at the following year, what they can do, what they can't do, what they need to do, and just trying to make a plan but they wanted to get out of town to do it, and I can get that. You know, get away from the distractions of home, not be, not worrying about vacuum in the house or your daughter running in. And so, so they have had, uh, and she sent me a text and said that they're getting some good hard work done. So just keep them in prayer. Um, Roll Tide, Jared, and just keep it on. That's for a Mac right back here. You know I wouldn't say that from my pulpit. <laughs> now, we are, if y'all were watching, we are thinking about you, and we, we uh, hope you're getting a lot of good hard work done, and, and, and we are praying on our end. Um, I'm not real sure I can do the whole Roll Tide thing again. I did that for him last week. Um, yeah, that's two weeks in a row now. I don't know. So we got some prayers out of our prayer box. Uh, someone has a friend <coughs> named Norman, and his father passed and wants us to remember. And um, then Anna, Anna sent us, gave us a prayer request. It says, Lucas Williams, pray that Lucas Williams finds his way back to the Lord. And Nick... Nick's saying to stop acting like he does to my sister, Anna. And then a prayer request, praying for my father who has stage four lung cancer, praying the chemo will work and that he will once again will have the ability to leave his bed and function by himself. This is a great outreach for our church. These are probably people that do not have a church family, and we are all that they have. And so I appreciate y'all, first of all, letting us build that. And Donna designed the prayer shed because it looks much better than what I had in mind. <laughs> and, uh, 
But people are using our prayer shed, and, and people are in need of prayer, whether they're at church or whether they're suffering with COVID or not. So let us not, not a Nazi salute, but let us raise our hands and pray for these, these people that took time to use our prayer shed this week. Father God, you know all the needs, you know all these people, you were standing right with them as they wrote their prayer request. We lift up Norman and his family who are grieving at the passing of their father. We lift up Lucas and Nick to find their way and, and to start acting more like Christ and to grow closer to you and to become kinder and gentler to those that love him. We pray for the father who has stage four lung cancer and for the family that is praying that the chemo will work and that he will once again have the strength to get up and get out of bed <clears throat> and join the family at the table. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to pray for people we love and strangers who are just friends we haven't met yet. We ask all of these things in your precious son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> and Jan is sitting back there holding her breath that my hair doesn't lean into that candle while I'm putting those in the prayer box. I also want to lift up... Um, <clears throat> My granddaughter, Ellie Jo, she spent the night with me. When did she spend the night? They spent the night Friday night. And somewhere around 1 a.m., as she says, I'm slobbering Ganny Bowles. Well, she doesn't know the word throw up or vomiting. And so when something's coming out of her mouth, she's slobbering. <laughs> and, and I didn't quite understand what she meant she was slobbering. I just knew she was soaking wet and the bed was soaking wet. <laughs> and Easton is, oh my gosh, did she pee in the bed? I said, no, it's wet up here at her head. <laughs> but she, uh, she really did, she threw up from about 1 a.m. until about 8.30 last night. And Lindsay said she... She woke up, what did I say, at one, 4 o'clock this morning and had another round of it. So she, she didn't have fever at my house, but they said she had a little low-grade fever. So I don't know, she's got some kind of stomach bug. Uh, Linnell says there's stuff going around. We've all taken our mask off and the world has started rolling again. <laughs> So, um, so, so when, when can I expect this stomach bug to be over? Is it, is it a 24-hour virus? There's been a 24-hour bug, there's been a two-week bug, there's been a, you name it. Just You've seen it. <laughs> oh, my. Well, just remember, if you want to lighten the mood the next time you're throwing up, just tell somebody you're slobbering really hard. <laughs> Uh, we got a nice thank you note from um, the Freedom Christian Worship Center that we send our uh, money to for the food pantry. Thank you all so very much for your recent contribution to the food bank ministry. Your generosity will bless many households. May God continue to bless you in all that you do, the Freedom Christian Worship Center. And we will put this out where everyone can see it. And I think that's all on my uh, list. I do want to announce, in case I didn't announce it, um, that I hope that as you have come to church the last couple of weeks, you have seen the beautiful nativity set in the yard. That was given, Lamar, you came and helped her put that up, didn't you? That was given by Libby and Bob and the grandchildren in honor, well, I guess Archie too, in honor of Gail. And um, I think David and Bill are going to try to get a spotlight on it. You brought one. Yeah, we've got a spotlight. So we're going to try to get it to shine just a little few hours at night for us. But I think it's really pretty out there. And I think Gail would be really happy that, to be remembered in that way. I told Donna last week when the manger came in, I'm pretty sure I heard Gail Van Hoy go, oh. Because I know she's used this manger in many, many, many Christmas plays right here in this church. And I'm, I, I just, I'm really certain I heard her just breathe when, when it came in. So um, are there any other announcements or prayer requests or praise reports we need to lift up this morning? I believe it's Friday, so he'll be out of commission for 
maybe a couple weeks ahead of my church. Um, Joel is the pastor at Mount Mitchell in Kannapolis, where David goes. <laughs> But if you've noticed, David's kind of been here for forever. We, we're not going to let, I'm not letting him go back. He doesn't know that, but I'm not letting him go back. But uh, Joel's a good guy. He, he is a, a clergy brother, and if you would keep Joel, um, it's, it's thyroid, and he's gotten uh, a lot of um, positive remarks. Um, the doctors are very positive about it, but still... It's still cancer, and you still, you just want to get it out and be done with it. Um, are there others? I have a phrase. I've been released. My thumb is healed. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll continue to do the exercises. I'm but it, the reconstruction was successful. Well, now, Donna, you know that means that we're going to put you back to work, right? I'm still kind of <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have been healed. <laughs> it's time to go back to work. <laughs> no, no, you've announced it in front of God and everybody. You're going back to work. <laughs> um, any reports on your dad? I haven't been there in three or four weeks. Oh, good. <clears throat> remember our shut-ins, and um, remember that it's not just the preacher. <laughs> Anybody can visit our shut-ins. Um, Glenna is in Albemarle. Archie is in Denver, and I know that's hard to get to Denver. Shirley and John are just down the road, but... Um, Anybody can visit them, and I, I told Don I'm, I'm hoping, I've worked, looked at my calendar, I'm hoping to be able, in the next two weeks before Christmas, to be able to get to see each one, and if you want to go with me. Carolyn likes to be my sidekick when I do the visiting, so, um, if, and if anybody else wants to go and meet shut-ins, I'm, I, you're, we're happy to go together, but um, just remember our shut-ins, and if you've got time to drop them a card or if you've got time to go visit them, I know they'd love even just 10 or 15-minute visit from, from anyone. Um, looking for my bulletin. So if there are no other announcements or praise requests, and I'm guessing there's not, let us go to worship. Uh, stand and join me for the call to worship, if you would, please. Christ, God's gift to this world, shall come for those who feel despair to know unbounded hope. God sent the gift of His only begotten Son into the world, so those who are suffering will know inner peace. God sent His light into the world, for those living in deep despair will find eternal joy. God sent His love into the world. For those who are lonely will feel truly loved. In Christ, Lord of the world, your time has come now. Come and fill hearts with the spirit of hope, peace, joy, and love. You may be seated. From Isaiah 43 through 5. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Today we relight the candle of hope and expectation. Let this candle remind us of the great hope we have in Christ the Messiah. 
and in God's promises. As we light the candle, <laughs> as we light the candle of peace and expectation, of preparation and peace, let it remind us to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. Let us pray. Father, guide us in confession of our sins. We know that in the greatness of your love, you have promised to forgive us. Cleanse us as we prepare our lives for the coming of Jesus again. This we ask in his precious name. Amen. Amen. If you will remain seated and open up your hymn books to page 204. and Isaiah chapter 11. <clears throat> for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles, and I will sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises, so that the Gentiles in him and the Gentiles, so the one who rises to rule the Gentiles in him the Gentiles shall have hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And from <clears throat> Isaiah 11, a shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall choose to judge. He shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. 
He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall graze, and their young will lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw just like the ox, and the nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the uh, serpent's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord and the waters that cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> If you would stand, if you are able, and join us on page 188. This week we will be doing all four verses. join me for our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed found on page 188. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
You may be seated. And I did remember that important announcement that I wanted to make. Thank goodness I remembered it before 2 a.m. Uh, what I wanted to say is I hope that you are planning to come to our Christmas Eve service. It'll be at 7 o'clock, so you've got time to have dinner with your family, come to church, and get home before Santa Claus comes. We, we used to do midnight service. Uh, David and I did, and I he understand y'all did too, but excuse me, Flynn family, but most of us have aged out of staying up till midnight. We don't even do the New Year's Eve thing anymore. We do that at 9 p.m., but uh, we are going to bring in Christmas Eve at 7 p.m., and um, the good news is um, if you have ever been to our Lighting of Fall Fires and have come up here and heard the beautiful recorder group that comes and plays for us, one of the ladies in that group, Zen Gwen Zimbroski, is going to play for us. Um, Carolyn always feels bad because she has family on Christmas Eve. I don't know why she wants to take time to be with her family. I don't get that. But once again, we found a replacement for you on Christmas Eve. So, so invite your friends and your family and um, come. And I don't have the whole service put together yet, but I'm working on it. I've got to get it to Gwen and just pray. When you're praying for the church, pray for the Christmas Eve service because I heard a lot of good things last year. People were really tough. But I think also last year it was in the middle of COVID and people were just glad to be out and be amongst other believers. So mark your calendars for the 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And that was the announcement that I wanted to make. Now, um, if you would, let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Holy Father, we do thank you for this morning and the sunrise and all of the blessings that you give to us each day. We thank you for another chance to come together as broken and faulty, sinful people uh, just trying to do the next best thing um, each day. We thank you, Father, for forgiving us when we try to get through the day without you or we start the day and then remember you later on. Um, Father, help us to keep you front and center in our hearts and in our minds for all the good things you have done for us from the garden to the tomb to 2021, and we're about to bust into 2022. Father, you know it's been a hard year. You know that people have suffered over the past 18 months in ways that we have not seen in this country, maybe world, in over a hundred years. And we, we've got some things right, some things we have not gotten right, and some things um, have changed for the better, but many things have not. Our world has become super divisive. And God, this is why we come. This is why we are waiting and anticipating your birth, because we know that nothing can heal our nation but you. We know that only you, the little baby that is going to be in that manger in just a few weeks, that is our only hope for any kind of peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in the world, peace in our families, and peace in this community. Father, we just hope that that you can fill our hearts with the comfort and joy of the season and and we can keep being your people with the hope of knowing that 2022 is going to come whether we're ready or not it's coming and and we we want to walk into the new year with the new baby and with peace in our hearts. It is hard, Father, to think of you and, and have that, that peace that, that, that you gave to us. In, in, you, you left peace to comfort us. You left peace with the Holy Spirit so that we can find it at any time. But God, when we look around and we see so many people hurting, 
we see so many children being trafficked and, and being used as human slaves. We see so many And right now, as I'm praying this prayer, I am certain that someone else has died of an overdose. We, our, our country is, we, we, the drugs are just <clears throat> destroying us, Father. And we need the peace of knowing that that's going to stop someday, that we're going to be able to stop these drugs from coming into our country. We need peace in our hearts that, that our representatives in D.C. are going to stop fighting for power and start fighting for the people because they're, they're so um, distracted by their personal needs and wants and desires that, that they have forgotten that they were elected to go and fight for us. So Father, I ask you to put your healing hand on this nation. I ask that you be with all of our shut-ins who are at home and listening to us this morning and, and those that are too sick to even sit up and, and join us. We pray for all that are not here today because they're sick or they are in grief, they are in mourning. We, we pray for all, all of the empty pews this morning that someone should be here. But most of all, Father, we pray for our forgiveness. We pray that you will forgive us for our many sins and trespasses. Forgive us when we can't be kind to that person that's having a hard day. God, you know some people are just hard to love, but you never told us that that was a good excuse to not care for them. So Father, this morning I lift up all the least, the lost, and the hurting people, those that I know and those that I do not know. I lift up my prayers of, of the times that I did not love you well and I did not love your people well. The times that I was short with my family. And we've all been there. I think that my prayers are the same as, as everyone that hears my voice. Sometimes we just have a bad day. God, forgive us for not praying before we open our mouth. And right now, God, we come to you with our own personal um, request of forgiveness, our own personal petitions that are just between us and you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, I pray that, that we are have set our minds in anticipation mode and we are going to be fully expect, expecting a miracle on Christmas Eve and, and throughout the year 2022. We are in hopeful expectation of great things that we know you can do. God, I ask that you bless the words of the pastor today. I ask that you anoint the music, every word that we sing, every note Carolyn plays. I ask that you cover our prayers with your blessings and your mercies. I ask you, Father, that when we leave here today, that someone at some point has seen the face of Jesus and that we will walk out of here with our burdens just a little bit lighter and we will be able to set aside the world for the next 40 minutes and just be at peace with you and your word and your people. And God's people prayed the prayer of the disciples asking our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. And now as forgiven and reconciled people with God, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to him. Uh, as Lamar comes forward, and as you give your gift to God for kingdom building, please turn and give the gift of peace to someone sitting near you with words of kindness and love. <clears throat> That you give to us and we ask that you accept these few that we're giving back to you but that you will bless them and you will use them for your glory in this church and in this community these things we ask in your son's name jesus christ amen you may be seated <clears throat> So now to summarize the, um, the scripture, I don't know where to put everything. The scripture that I read this morning, um, I think Paul said it best. He said, now may the, the God of hope fill you with all joy and all peace in believing and that you may abound in hope. And the way that you will do that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. So now the God of hope fill you with that joy. And may you carry those words with you as you leave here today. It's Advent, my friends. If you, in case you haven't figured that out in the last 20 minutes, we are in our second week of Advent. Can you believe we're halfway to Christmas? It's the week, this is the week that we remember peace. The, the red letter words that are in our Bible, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, a peace that passes all human understanding, Jesus Christ. Week after week, I stand in this pulpit and I do my very best to preach to you the gospel with love and with faithfulness. And, and in doing so, sometimes I will refer to some of my favorite authors or some well-known authors, um, but all you find are, are all well-respected, and, and I hope that when I quote an author that, that you have just heard some very profound and brilliant theological ideas from that quote that I gave to you. And this morning is no different. This morning I want to discuss a particular book by an author who to this date has written 42 world famous, uh, what is that, New York Times number one bestseller books. His books have been published in over 34 languages and can be found in many of our homes. In fact, I dare say that everyone in here has at least one of his books sitting in our home somewhere. His work is so well respected that he goes by the title Doctor. To be more specific, our favorite doctor, Dr. Seuss. The book I want to discuss this morning is How Did This Grinch and Why He Stole Christmas. And, and for those of you who do not know the book or have not seen the cartoon, 
First of all, I do not suggest you watch the Jim Carrey version. Go buy a book or watch the cartoon. It comes on every Christmas, and if you have missed it, I'm going to briefly explain it to you. If you have not missed it and you've read it every year, as many of us have, just hopefully you're still going to get something out of this. Although I cannot imagine having missed the cartoon, but just in case. The story is about a Grinch who lives in a cave. And to be honest, he's one of the meanest creatures that you have ever heard of. And I know that you've heard of him because even if you have not read the book or seen the cartoon, you watch TV and you've seen commercials about the Grinch. And I even am starting to see the Grinch pop up in front yard. So I know you've heard of the Grinch. He's described in this book as being cuddly as a cactus. Don't you love Dr. Seuss? With termites in his smile and garlic in his soul. Now, I think that's a great description of Satan. I just, you know, prickly, as, as cuddly as a cactus. The bottom line is, this dude is mean through and through. And like a bad apple, he's completely rotten down to his core. In the story, the Grinch makes it clear that he hates Christmas. I don't think he really knows why he hates it, except that everybody else is so happy during Christmas. But he hates Christmas, and he hates everybody that celebrates it. So in a most wicked, evil plan, the Grinch comes up with this idea that he is going to wipe out Christmas for all those cheerful Whovilles down in Who Town, those creatures that live in that small, happy town. So on Christmas Eve... The Grinch sneaks into every house in the village, and he, he's like the opposite of Santa. Where Santa came and dropped a gift, he goes through the chimney and he takes the gift out. He even takes the Christmas trees. He steals the presents, the food, the stockings, the decorations from every home that he, that's in Whoville. And the Grinch is returning at home at the break of dawn, and he is positively pleased, as he says, that he has ruined Christmas for all. They, and there will no longer be any happy Whovilles on Christmas morning. But when we reach the end of the story, we find that's not the case at all. Because on Christmas morning, when he's up there with all their stuff, he hears a noise. And he says, that's a noise that I must hear. He's so certain that they're all moaning and groaning and they're so, so uh, angry about what has happened to their Christmas, that their Christmas has been stolen. He says, I've just got to hear this noise. And, and he, he was thinking, you know, they've all woke up, they found there's no Christmas, and, and, and he wanted to hear their misery. So he got a little bit closer and he, you know, covered his ear uh, or made a whatever you make out of your ear. But he found out the sound wasn't sad. It wasn't sad at all. This sound was Mary. He says, how could it be so? But it is Mary. It is very Mary. And on Christmas morning, he's listening, as you see, with what do you call this when you put your hand up to your ear? Anyway, he's got his hand up to his ear. He's wanting to hear them moaning and groaning. And he says, he says that... that he hated Christmas, and he wanted it gone. And he was thinking he got those guys, but he didn't. He says, every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, he stood puzzling and puzzling, how could it be so? He came without the ribbons, and he came without the tags, and he came without packages, boxes, or bags. And now he is trying to get down there a little bit closer because he just cannot believe they're so happy. And he puzzled for three hours till his puzzler was sore. And then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. He says, maybe Christmas... Maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, is something a little more. And here are all the Whovilles holding hands with no presents, no Christmas, but still singing with joy. You see, the Grinch realized what we all could have told him. There's something very sacred beneath all the wrappings and trimmings and that something else was the true meaning of Christmas. 
And as this book points out, the more the Grinch understood the love and peace that Christmas really brings, the Grinch's heart grew three sizes that day. And he popped out of his sled. What about us? We show up every Sunday. We give to the poor. We fill up shoeboxes and backpacks. And we say yes when the preacher calls. But how big is our heart when nobody's watching? What meaning does the true story of Christmas hold for each of us? Where are those red letters when we have so many voices in this world screaming at us throughout the week, do we remember the words from around the Advent wreath? Do we remember that this is a time of preparation? Do we remember the symbols of the candle, candles on the wreath and we let the Holy Spirit fill us with peace that passes all human understanding and let our heart grow three sizes too big? Do we hold close the words of Paul when he wrote the Philippians? In chapter 4, he writes to them that Jesus died on the cross to make peace between us and God. And then he reminded them what Jesus promised his disciples when he left them, his peace. Not the peace that the world gives, not that kind of peace, but peace from the Holy Spirit. Paul wrote that, that the peace of God which transcends all of our human understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. The Grinch saw a little bit of that peace when he saw the Whoville still holding hands and singing without the beautiful trees and the wrapping and the ribbons. Do we hold this promise close to us as the world is pulling us to things that are not holy. These are the promises that we are to hold close. This is what I believe the Grinch learned as he saw the Who's still singing. I believe that he saw peace on earth and goodwill to man. I, I wonder, are, are we preparing our hearts to see that peace on earth? Are we preparing during this season of preparation to have and, and to know and to understand what we're preparing for? Because it's one thing to say, prepare the way for the Lord is coming. What does that mean? We all know that the child was born on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. We know that we're preparing for his birth, but what does that mean? It takes us a whole year to get through that and to figure out he was born for this and he taught about this and he died for this. We are called as Christians to use this Advent as a time of preparation and sincere expectation. I, I would ask you to really get into the book of Luke over the next couple of weeks. Take this time to sincerely prepare your heart and where your Bible tells you that this is referencing Isaiah, go back to Isaiah and read that. Really prepare your hearts for what we are expecting when we come back here on Christmas Eve. We are called to use this time to focus our understanding and our efforts on the promises that God makes to us, not just during this season, but all the time. We know that in the garden, Adam and Eve messed up and he sent them out, but he didn't send them out without a promise that he was going to make it right. So from the time of the garden, God's been planning to put a baby in this manger. From the time of the garden, God's been planning to send his only son to the cross for us. As Christians, we believe that this precious child that came that night in Bethlehem was the very key to the fulfillment of the promise made to us by God and spoken to us through his prophets. A promise that would bring all to him who believed in him, to a deeper understanding of who God is and will always be. And, and it is for this promise that our heart is preparing for. You see, if we don't understand what's getting ready to happen here, how can we go out and be kingdom builders? 
If we don't get it, if we don't come to the realization that the Grinch did, well, maybe there's something more than the trees and the lights and the ribbons. If we can't come to the place where this cartoon character came, how can we be disciples of Christ? It was a promise that through the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of his very son, that we would learn and we would know what God is. This is what we're supposed to learn, and this is what we need to understand, but we can't understand it if we don't study it. I'm sorry, I can't give it to you in 20 minutes on Sunday morning. I'm asking you to go study it, because this is what you need to know about God. He's a God of peace. He's a God of hope. He's a God of love. He's a God of joy. He is a God of power. But most of all, God is, is whom we celebrate during this Advent season and that we focus on. God is the God that we put all of our hope in. And during this season of Advent, we place all of our hope on a little child. A little child that was born in Bethlehem. In whom and through whom all of God's kingdoms have come to us. Advent teaches us to hold fast to what's, what is inside of us. Hold fast to our faith that's in Jesus Christ because all the noise is going to get us and everything might be taken away from us. But if we've got that faith inside of us, we can still, we can still have the calm and the peace because it, a faith in Jesus, because of our faith in Jesus, we know that he's the one that redeems us from our sins. We know that he is the one that frees us from all that's getting in our way of loving God. And we know that he is the one who gives us hope to believe in a new and a better life for ourselves, for our family, and for all humanity. And because of this faith, we can have that peace that passes all human understanding. My friends, is Advent. You are going to encounter Grinches, and they are going to try to steal your peace and steal your joy and the true meaning of Christmas away from you. And I'm praying that you won't let them do that. I'm praying that you will keep asking yourself this question through Advent. What is it that I am truly hoping to receive on Christmas Day? I can tell you, for me, I've got a couple people I want to come closer to God. And, and I'm, I'm praying every morning, noon, and night. They're going to find their way to God, and they're going to get a deep relationship with God. And then next year, they're going to be disciples, and they're going to be with us fighting for God's kingdom. I do want that new purse, David. Don't forget that. But mostly, mostly, I want to see more disciples. I want to see more people fighting for God's kingdom. So I ask you, what is it that you're truly hoping to find on that Christmas day? I remember, if any of you are friends with me on Facebook, I don't know why nobody has seen this song, but I remember Thanksgiving, I was making some macaroni and cheese, and I was by myself, everybody was gone, and... And, and this song came on. I never had heard this song before. Maybe I'll email it to y'all so you can all hear it. But if you remember in the First World War, I know none of you remember that. None of us were here, but maybe we've heard the stories. I heard, I've heard this story. And this, and this group from Ireland made a beautiful song out of it. And, and it was Christmas night in 1915. And, and our... The soldiers were, were so tired. They were so tired of fighting. And, and, and then suddenly they heard the enemy singing Silent Night. Have you heard that story before? I'm going to put it in an email. I'm going to send it to you. Nobody, no, I, I, I think Facebook does kind of block stuff because nobody even liked that song. Nobody even, I don't think anybody listened to it. But the story is beautiful and I believe that's what Christmas is all about. Here we are in the middle of a war. And our people hear the enemy singing Silent Night. And just for a moment, they all came together and they sang together in their own language. They didn't understand the, the words, but they knew the tune. And they all sang it together. What has, 
What is it that, that God has promised to all of us that nobody can ever remove? He can never, nobody can ever take our joy and peace away unless we give them permission to do it. As Christians, we know that, that our faith and our hope is in the child that was born that night that brings us salvation and promise of life everlasting. I'm asking you to never let any Grinch take that away from you. Jesus came to bring us that peace through his sacrifice of his life. And we will never, ever understand on this side of the veil what it took for him to do that. So I, I'm asking this, this second Sunday of Advent, let us all be like the Who's in Whoville who stood on that, that hill all holding hands and they continue to sing praises to their Father in heaven even the, though the glitter and the glam of Christmas was gone. Because you got to remember, Jesus didn't come into a glittery, glamorous world. He came in in a manger. There was no tinsel, there were no ribbons. And regardless of what you believe about the nativity, there were no wise men. It took them two years to find this baby, and he wasn't a baby anymore. He was a walking two-year-old toddler. Jesus didn't come into the world with fanfare. So let us remember and hold on to the Holy Spirit that abides with us, no matter what the Grinches throw our way through this blessed season and always. Let us... Remember the faith of our fathers. Let us stand and sing about that faith that our fathers and mothers passed down before us. If you are able, will you join me on page 451 on Be Thou My Vision? today with the gift of peace that passes all understanding that only Jesus Christ can give to us through the power of God and the love of the Holy Spirit. Amen.